Hello everyone. Ever felt frustrated trying to go from one HTML element to another using a fade out fade in effect? After you found out that there was no out of the box way to do that and you didn't want to make your project dependent on some front end framework just for that one specific functionality? I mean, how hard can it be? Can't we just gradually change the display property of an element from something like block to none? and then the other way around for the other element by using a CSS transition or animation? Well, <laughs> the thing is, that doesn't work with properties that basically express one of two states along the lines of true or false, visible or hidden and so on, because there are no easily determinable intermediate states between those two. So what you can do instead is you can take a property like opacity, for example, that can be modified gradually, say from 1 to 0, until the current element can no longer be seen, and then you could immediately change its display property to none. You could do a similar thing for a fade-in, except that you would kind of have to reverse the whole process. Well, with that in mind, let me show you how I used to do it, and then I'm going to show you what I now think is a better approach. Okay, so let me walk you through what I had before, or what I was using before. Basically, I had two uh, main functions, fade out async and fade in async. And one, you could say, a helper function called sleep, which is basically awaited and it sets a timeout to the specified number of milliseconds. Uh, yeah, so the default duration of the fade out here was set to 500 milliseconds, so half a second. Same for the fade in and the frame count. Basically, you're supposed to determine how smooth it was. So we go from opacity equal to 1, which is like 100%. We go all the way down to 0 until it's no longer visible. So we keep decreasing the opacity. We calculate the delay first, which is the uh, duration uh, divided by the frame count. Um, and then we calculate the step between, you know, each, <laughs> between the con consecutive frames. So we change the opacity by subtracting that step um, gradually from what we have at the given moment. So we have the target here, which is our target HTML, HTML element. So we update its opacity and then finally we set the display uh, property to none so it's no longer visible and here we have a similar thing except we kind of start with the display property by default it's set it's set to block and then the delay just the same procedure as before and make sure that we start from zero so it's not visible and then we keep increasing the opacity and changing, updating the style of the target element. And then we wait uh, for the specified number of, um, you know, uh, milliseconds, which is uh, actually comes from the delay part here. So uh, that's basically the idea. And the problem with this solution that I found is that it doesn't really, usually it lasts or it takes uh, much longer than the specified duration. That's one thing. And the other thing is that sometimes it's kind of choppy, uh, especially if you have like a complicated UI, then you're probably going to see that or notice that sometimes elements would just kind of disappear like suddenly instead of gradually fading out and in so uh, yeah that's what i wanted to show you and now we're going to 
I'm going to try to show you what I do now instead. So back to VS Code, we're going to create a new folder, fade out and in. And inside this folder, a new file, fade out and in, HTML. And again, I'm going to keep everything in this one file just for demonstration purposes so that you can view all of the code pretty much at the same time. So let's uh, create a main element here and between those main tags, let's create maybe like four, four divs called box. Let's go to the head part and do some styling, some style main background color, maybe this with 100 viewport width height, 100 viewport height. And let's set the display property to flex. As for the boxes, just make sure that we can see them or see where they are. So border, one pixel solid red. Maybe let's just make sure that all elements have their box sizing property set to border box. And let's see what it looks like. We can see a margin around the whole thing. So let's just write body margin zero so that we can get rid of that. And now for the box, let's say flex grow one so that it can fill its parent container so that they can be distributed evenly and within the parent. Okay, so now let's say we want to uh, go from or, you know, transition from this element to this element. So let's say this is going to be called first. And this one, let's call it second. And let's style them so we can tell them apart. First, background color, maybe this. And then for the second, let's use some different color, background color, maybe this. And for now we can see uh, both of them. Uh, but we're going to basically hide the second one. So we're going to say display uh, none. Right, so from the user's perspective, for all practical purposes, this element, uh, I mean, the second element doesn't really exist on the page unless, you know, we go uh, to inspect and then we can see uh, it here in the DOM tree. But other than that, it's it's gone. All right, so we're going to be using uh, the CSS animation property in combination with JavaScript to achieve the fade out and fade in effects. So uh, first let's define the keyframes rule. So we're going to say fade out and it's going to go from opacity one, so fully visible to opacity zero, so uh, invisible. And we're going to do a similar thing for the fade in effect, except that we're going from zero to one. So uh, invisible to fully visible. All right, so I think we're done as far as the CSS part goes. So let's write some script here. And we're going to say function uh, fade 
out is going to take two parameters target which is our target element and duration which by default is equal to 500 milliseconds so half a second and this function is going to return a new promise inside a promise we're going to write resolve arrow and inside we're gonna have something called animation ended which is like you know an arrow function that will define what's gonna happen after the animation or the corresponding animation which is here has ended for now let's leave it empty and let's uh, say target on animation end so this event is gonna fire this function and also we want to set the animation property of our element to fade out We're gonna insert the duration here in milliseconds. I'm gonna say one, which it means that it's uh, not repeated. It's executed only once. Okay, so once this animation has ended, we're gonna say target, uh, target style display, we're going to set it to none because uh, this element should be hidden now and we're going to we're going to unsubscribe from you know the on animation end event basically set it to null and also target style animation we're going to set it to null because we don't want it to be associated anymore with this animation it's just for the purposes of this function so here let's just create a little helper function uh, let's call it show second and it's going to take our target uh, async function of course gonna take our target we're gonna await the fade out a function so it can you know finish its animation so we're gonna take this target here so let's say on click show second and say this and let's see if it kind of works for now yeah, we can see that it disappears. Uh, it gradually disappears, except the the other one um, doesn't appear because we have to write the other function for the fade in functionality. So let's just copy this maybe over here and let's make some changes. So apart from you know <laughs> renaming the function itself, uh, we're gonna add one more parameter which is going to be display uh, by default it's going to be block and uh, here let's make some changes so instead of fade out we're going to have fade in but before we set that you know animation we have to set the display of our target to the one specified here because we kind of have to reverse the whole process so here once it ends we're going to say an animation and null and style animation null as well and i think we're we're good to go so let's just try to grab the other element so let 
second document get element by id second and let's try to fade it in second so maybe let's just move it before all of that okay and let's see what happens mm, second oh, let's see why it's not uh, working yet okay so let's just call resolve on both of them Yeah, that's, that's the part I was forgetting. So yeah, we actually have to uh, explicitly call resolve in order for it to work. So let's create another function here called show first, show first. I'm gonna say first is gonna be here. So we're going to fade it in and our target will be the second element. Show, show first. All right, so yeah, it seems to be working. So great. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you um, like my content, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit that like button if you found it useful. And that's pretty much it for now. Thank you for watching and bye.